Hello and welcome to Gaming and Wire Shoot, or Gawis for short. For those who've missed what it's all about, this series is meant to show you certain kinds of computer gaming and why you should get into it, or why you shouldn't. This second installment, which is also part of Adventure Gaming, will be looking at The Legend of Kyrendia. Kyrendia was developed by Westwood Studios in 1992. Westwood Studios was bought by Electronic Arts in 1998 and shut down five years later. Karendia is a trilogy and each part, or a book as they're called here, stars another main character but takes place in the same universe. The subsequent games came out in 94 and 96, each with new additions. They are, in order, Book 1, Book 2 The Hand of Fate, and Book 3 Malcolm's Revenge. I'll be focusing mainly on Book 2 in this Gawis. The Legend of Karendia is an adventure game, meaning the bulk of the content is item collection and puzzle solving. Each game also adds an element to that, which is different in each game. The Hand of Fate adds a potion brewing mechanic that helps you through the vital parts of the adventure. Now, why this game and why in the blazes am I focusing on part 2? Well, for new gamers I would advise you play 2 first. There will be some spoilers unfortunately, but the second game is not a continuation of the first game, while 1 and 3 are obviously sequels. Some of the same characters do star in all 3 games. Now, why I'm not using book 1 in this, is that it has many ways to die, and some puzzles are only solvable if you die to find out what happens and reload. I don't recommend that kind of game mechanic to new gamers, as if you miss one save, you might have to redo a major part. Book 2 features a whole lot less deaths, and rarely becomes unsolvable, which book 1 is rather guilty of. If you're experienced in these matters, by all means start with 1. Why the Legend of Kyrandia? It's abandonware and basically awesome. The entire series has an incredible immersive storyline. The characters are lovable and the humor is awesome. The backgrounds are well drawn for the time, although they get slightly repetitive in the first game. The music is nice and provides good backup, though it never really wowed me. Book 2 focuses on Xanthia, a zazzy in your face alchemist with an incredible amount of wardrobe changes. On to why you should play this. Its main draw are the stereotypical characters in a fantasy world and the quippy and funny exchanges. The puzzles are doable and the spellbook takes some out of the box thinking to work out. If you can't figure out why the description Windy Wolf requires you to put gnarly bark in the cauldron, you might be stumped at times. I do advise good record keeping because there's a recurring password in the game you acquire somewhere at the start and it changes every game. Also, it's sometimes hard to keep track of what's in your cauldron. I'm sad you can die at all in Kyrandia, and the first and last games are notorious for being able to get stuck without reloading a big bunch. Just playing the second game does solve this for the major part. The game features some very minor implied nudity, and the foul language is present, but rather obscured. It's meant for slightly older audiences, who might even get the Three Stooges reference. The game is a no-go if slightly crude humor and immersive storylines isn't enough to draw you in. Since all three games are abandonware, it's free to give it a go and I suggest you really do so if you feel slightly drawn towards it. I'll put the link for all three games in the description. The games really do have a massive universe and I suggest you download the manual to read the background as well. It's truly an adventure game, even if it's one of the lesser known ones. That's all I have to say for now, and once again I'm just left with, I hope you enjoy and good gaming.